Hello and welcome to part four of this Let's Program G-Code series. And in this series, we're programming this simple bush on a CNC lathe. So my name's Mark, I am G-Code Tutor. And in this lesson, we're going to look at how to do a peck drill cycle to produce this bore with a drill. Now in the real world, we would probably do this twice. We would do a pilot drill and then a drill that takes us almost to size. And this is because we're looking at a 20 mil hole here. And this would also depend on the material that we're cutting. We haven't specified a material for this. So all our speeds and feeds and features such as this are irrelevant as this is more of a demo program. So we're gonna do this in one shot. We're just gonna do this with one drill and not pilot drill it because the program is exactly the same. And these are just a few of the reasons why you should never punch this program straight in your machine and expect it to run. Every G-code control is slightly different, every machine is set up slightly different, and the parameters are also. So we shouldn't just expect to be able to type in any program into our machine and expect it to run. These lessons are just teaching you a generic version of G-code that you can adapt to your own use. Okay, so our first line is always an operator's note letting us know what this section of code is. And then we use an end number, a search function in this case, so we can search to this section of program. In the old days, we used to number every line. These days, we just tend to use the end number for subroutines or search functions. At the start of each sequence, we need to issue a safety line. This way it puts the machine into a safe state, just in case we've stopped the program halfway through a different sequence and we jump into the drilling cycle. I've gone into way more detail on the safety line in the previous parts of this course, so I'm just going to glance past it quickly now. So our G54 sets our working datum, which we've set at the front of this part. G21 puts the machine into the metric measuring system. G80 is quite relevant on this one because we are gonna be using a drilling cycle. So G80 removes any active cycles in the machine. G40 removes any cutter compensation and G97 sets our spindle speeds to revs per minute mode. Well, our 19 and a half millimeter drill looks huge in comparison to the rest of this part. So T0404 selects our tool we wish to use and the geometry and offsets. LMO6 turns the turret round to bring the tool on the center line of the machine. It's our tool change M code. As our machine is in G97 mode, um, we can set the RPM just by giving an S value. So S600 sets our RPM to 600 revs per minute. And MO3 turns on our spindle in a clockwise direction. So we're turning the right way where those cutting edges are on our drill. With the spindle on and the machine in a safe state, it's time to start moving our axes around and start looking at cutting this part. So G00, our rapid travel command, we're using this to bring our tool down to the center line on X0. And I'm also coming five millimeters away from that front face of our part. Remember our datum is on that front face, our Z0. So Z5 will give us five millimeters clearance between the end of the part and the cutting edge of the drill. And MO8 turns on the coolant. So as we're wrapping it in, the coolant pumps are starting up and getting ready to throw coolant on our cutting edges. Now in the previous example with the sensor drill, I wrapped it on two separate lines and I'm doing the same here. So this way, we're coming in fast to five millimeters off the job. Then almost instantly, as soon as that line's been read by the machine, we're gonna jump in an extra four millimeters to get that drill real close to the front face of our part. So we're coming into Z1.0 and we're still on that rapid command G00. It's still live from the line above. Now most operators like to do a, this in one line. They like to wrap it straight to Z 1.0. So the reason I do this in two lines is because I can single block through it when we're initially running this uh, sequence. And I don't have to worry about any collisions because I've got plenty of clearance from that front face. And by doing this in two lines, we're not actually losing much time, maybe a millisecond or two, nothing that's going to affect production. Now we get to the line of code this lesson is mainly focused on, and this is our PEC drilling cycle. There is many ways we can write a PEC drilling cycle, and there's lots and lots of features and different cycles we can use. For this lesson, I'm using a very basic version, and for the more complex 
versions and to learn about every different kind of way we can do this, pop over to my website where I have a course on CNC lathe programming and it's all covered in there. And I'll pop the link below in the description. So we could use a G73 cycle and that's where we peck drill, but the drill doesn't fully retract from the part. So we're just breaking an edge from that swarf as we're going into the part. But by using a G83 cycle, we're retracting outside the part after each peck. And this allows the coolant to get in the bore and blow all that swarf out the bore and also keep everything nice and cool. So the G83 peck cycle removes that drill from the bore after each peck. So our Z depth there, Z minus 45 millimeters. Well, the depth of our part is 40 millimeters. I'm going five millimeters past this just to allow for that angle of the drill to make sure it fully breaks through the diameter there. If we go for it 40, we're just going to pop a little tiny hole at 40 millimeters. And when we part off, the hole won't be fully formed. Our R value is our retract distance from the datum. So after we're plunging into our bore, we're coming back two millimeters off the face of the part after each peck. And now this allows the coolant to get in there and flush the swarf out the bore and keep everything nice and cool. And Q value is our depth of peck. So each six millimeter cut, it's going to stop, retract, go back in, and then cut for another six millimeters. Now the controls are very clever. They don't wrap it straight into six millimeters on the peck. It will stop a predefined distance set by the parameters before it starts cutting. So it could be half a millimeter or so. So we would wrap it out to the R value, wrap it back in, maybe half a millimeter away from the cutting edge and then start feeding in again to carry on drilling that bore. So Q6 means we cut a six millimeter depth of cut for each peck. And finally, F is our feed rate. And if we need to dwell at all on this line, if we're going to a blind hole and we wish to pause the cut of movement at the bottom of that hole to clean up the surface finish, we can use a P word and we can use I, J and K to give us more control over the size of the pecs also. And this is all covered in great depth on my CNC lathe programming course. Because the G83 is a cycle, we have to cancel that cycle with G80. Otherwise the machine will still think that as we plot points in the machine, it's still doing a cycle. And this is another reason why we add the G80 to the safety line. If we happen to stop the machine during that PEC cycle, and then maybe switch to the roughen cycle, it would still think it's involved in a cycle. So we always add G80 at the beginning of each sequence, just so that doesn't happen. So with our whole board, we can now take the tool home. So I'm wrapping in back to Z five millimeters to give us a bit of clearance from the edge of our part there. So G00 is the rapid command and I'm using MO9 to turn the coolant off. I'm mixing this up a little bit. Sometimes I use the MO9 on the previous lessons on the next line down, but as long as we're not cutting anymore, we can turn the coolant off where we'd like within the program. On this line, I'm switching back to our machine datum. So we're now reading the machine zero position and not the zero position we set at the front face of the part. And I'm moving the tool away to a safe position to do a tool change. So hello, I'm saying X zero here. X zero is no longer the center line of the machine. It is now a safe distance to do a tool change somewhere in the 3D environment inside our machine. Our spindle is still rotating, so we're gonna turn that off with MO5. This stops our spindle. Now you notice on this part, I do M codes one on each line. Now this is because some controls, not all controls, but certainly some controls only allow us to use M codes once per line of code. And we're gonna finish off with an optional stop MO1, how I finish every sequence of code that I write. So this way we can get in there, check the bore, make sure it's deep enough, make sure the finish is okay if needed, and we can inspect the part before we run the next sequence. So that's just one way how we can write a pecking cycle to do a bore. Now, in reality, I may use a U-drill to make this part, now with a U-drill, we wouldn't need to center drill it and we wouldn't need to finish bore it. We can offset the U-drill and also use it as a boring bar. The reason I'm making the bush using these steps is to show you the most amount of different processes I can fit into one series of lessons. So we can cover the peck drilling cycle, 
And then this following lesson coming up afterwards, we will be doing a finishing bore sequence with a single point boring bar. So I run a website that teaches G-code programming called gcodetutor.com. I have lots of free articles and also some paid courses over on my website that teaches you how to program these machines in a professional environment. So pop over to my website. I'll put a bunch of links below in the description of different things that's relevant to this course. And I hope to see you there.